Hey guys, this is Fia back with another uh, high process video. And this one is going to be scented with bedtime bath fragrance oil. Uh, it's a lavender chamomile bedtime bath. I think it's a Johnson & Johnson dupe. Uh, okay. I was uh, warming, well, I melted my shea butter and coconut oil, and then I just poured the rest of the oils in there. I just got finished mixing my lye water with my aloe vera juice. And I think for the first time today, I might actually do a little stick blending action <laughs> with my hot process anyway. I usually stick blend, of course, with my cold process, but never with my hot process. So, felt like... Why not? Let's see what that's like. <laughs> so I'm going to pour in my lye water now. I hope you guys can see this because my camera's at a different angle again today. I'm trying to find the best ang angle in front of the window because it's uh, winter, so I'm losing the light a whole lot faster. It's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, there's no sun. It's all dreary and it's getting dark pretty darn fast, so... Kind of annoying. I didn't really want to turn on the kitchen light because that creates shadows uh, when I'm trying to make soap, so it's kind of annoying. Alright, so my colors with this is going to be like pink and purple. Um, not really in a specific way. I did think about try, sort of trying to do like a zebra type pattern, but you know, not really. So this is um pink lemonade from Nurture Soup. And by the way, I can't really tell if you guys can see me or if, or if I'm in the camera because the stupid phone <laughs> is in a different position today. So I can't write, just like look up and see where the stuff is. So. I have to walk around the table to make sure. And I'm actually going to pour put some of this pink right into the oils. I've never done that before, so why not find out what it's like? And these, this is a pink lemonade mica powder from Nurture Soap. And it says stay true, and it stays true in cold process, even though we're doing hot process. One to two teaspoons per pound of oil. So, <laughs> and I got this new uh, thing here from Nurture Soap. It's a tablespoon, a teaspoon, and when you flip it over, it's a half teaspoon and a half tablespoon. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to see how this works out. I'm going to make the whole thing pink, but at the end, I'm going to mix in a little purple to um like once it's all done i'll mix in a purple a little bit of purple like on one side and then as i'm scooping it out and putting it into the mold i'm gonna sort of just like mix it up quote unquote accidentally <laughs> and that's how i'll get my design <laughs> i'm trying to keep it simple because every time i try to be fancy it does not work not at all so i don't really want it to be hot pink so this is four pounds of oil. That's two teaspoons. Hmm. Should I do a third? Let's see where we at with a third. Why not? I can always add a little bit more later. So I'm going to be putting three teaspoons right in the oils. And we will see how that works out. living dangerously here. Hoping this don't fall in there. Oof, cloud of dust. I'm trying to, any residual powder that flies out, I'm trying to hope it goes in there and not everywhere else. Hmm. Okay, so that's in there. Live water's in there. I'm going to stick blend for the first time ever with my hot process. Let's see where that gets me. Put it right over the uh, color. I'm trying to burp the stick blender. 
trying to get some of them air bubbles out. You know what? I keep thinking that I'm doing cold process because I never use this for hot process, so I don't really need to burp the stick blender during hot process. <laughs> You guys can see real good because we are definitely losing a light pretty flip pretty uh fast. Darn. <sighs> That's the only thing I miss about the summer is the daylight savings. <laughs> say look like pink lemonade I, when you say pink lemonade you expect it to be all neon sort of bright color but this is pretty that's a nice deep pink hmm. I've come to thick trace <laughs> Should I stop blending here? Because hmm. usually I just whisk everything through the whole process. Hmm. I guess I could stop blending here. It is pretty thick. Um, and yeah, I guess I could stop blending here and just wait for it to get to the next stage. Which shouldn't be that far off, I guess. I don't know. Should I blend a little bit more? <laughs> I'm gonna stop right here. I don't want to blow out my little used <laughs> stick blender. I'm good. <laughs> so, you know, stick blender, my hot process is not bad at all. I don't know. Maybe sometimes I'll still whisk it and sometimes I'll stick blend it. Hmm. Or maybe now I'll just stick blend it for the camera. That's a pretty color. Now, I wonder. I did I didn't necessarily want it to be this dark. I wonder maybe I should have just stopped at two teaspoons to make it a little bit lighter so I can put it in a purple. But I wonder if I should just leave it this color. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if I should just leave it this color. It's a really nice color. I'm afraid if I try and do any purple, it would just look weird. Maybe I should try it anyway to see what happens. Even though I'll, sec I'll uh, color a little bit on this side with a, with purple, I you know I did intend to color the whole thing pink and just like you know figure it was purple. It wouldn't really matter if I you know add a little purple on this side while the whole thing was pink. I didn't think it really would matter. 
instead of, you know, at the end doing a little bit of pink here and a little bit of purple there, I actually wanted to do it this way. Hmm. I don't know. The question is, will it even, <laughs> I didn't think it would be this deep pink. So the question is, if I do add the purple, would it even, would you even tell that it was there? Or would it look like just two different colors of pink? That's a good question. Hmm. I'll be right back. I'm going to rinse off the stick blender. So I'm back. Ooh this is definitely thick. Look at that. Sorry about the shaking camera, guys. Now if this would have been cold process <laughs> and it would have did that when I tried to put something in it to stir it, that would have been all she wrote. No swirls, no nothing. You might as well just glop that in the mold because it, it's not going to work out. Oh, and since we had talked, since we had talked like you guys are here, which you are, <laughs> um... Remember that I when I was doing um, I think I was doing some cold process before and This is not gonna work. Anyway, I When I do cold process and I do a big batch I usually use the other insert to this crock pot as a big bowl and I said I needed to really uh, Get me a, a bucket or something, but I did go on Amazon. and got something Let me show you what I got I got a six quart bucket. I don't know if you guys can see that pretty good. And I got the bucket. I was like, why does this look so small? <laughs> it looks so tiny. And I'm like, isn't my crock pot insert bigger than this? The uh, crock pot is a five quart and this says six quart. So whatever. I said whatever. For some reason, I just assumed that it was going to be bigger than that. It's not. This thing is working, right? Yes, it's definitely hot. I'm so used to stirring everything with my whisk. I don't know if I bypassed a couple stages or... I don't know if I like this feeling of not knowing when I do my hot process. This is why I whisk, because I don't know what's happening. But... so used to this process taking longer and it's a uh, lumpy so I don't know I might have messed it up stick blended it see this is this is why I don't like to be fancy the stick blender was fancy apparently <sighs> I hope I don't have to rebitch <laughs> Even though I do love rebatching, but I didn't, I wanted this to be a really good soap, but why is it lumpy? I should not have stick blended. <sighs> so, there goes that. I probably won't be stick blending again. I just don't trust it. I don't think I'll be stick blending my hot process again. Not at all. at all because usually from the start I know how everything goes we get to the applesauce stage when it starts to separate and everything everything goes great then it comes back together then the mashed potato stage is when you know it's pretty much done this is just a lumpy mess after stick blending I don't know what happened Ugh. 
Why does it look like this? I wonder if I have to re -bitch. I guess we'll find out. Because it's really thick already. It's a waiting game. I'm just uncertain about what the heck is going on with this. I'm really uncertain. It's a waiting game. I'll bring you guys back when it looks like it's doing something different. Okay, so it looks like it's doing something now. I just left it alone, washed a couple dishes, and here we go. I was washing the dishes, and I was like, what is that sound? It kept sound like it sounds sort of like a sizzle or something. And I looked over and it looked like it wasn't doing anything. So I'm like, well, what is what the heck is that noise? And something told me to come over <laughs> and check the soap. Because even though it looked fine on the top, it just, something was going on because I kept looking over in this direction and I didn't see anything happening. I'm like, so I keep hearing something. So, here we go. We are at the episode stage now. Uh, but I wonder if it's going to come out lumpy because it looked like it was lumpy at first. Hopefully it melts out. And now I can use the whisk. It's loosened up a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still not sure if I like the hand blend, if I like the, uh, the stick blender for my hard process. It was too un unpredictable. I don't know, maybe if I'm on a time crunch or, or next time I won't stick blend. Ugh, I can't talk today. <laughs> next time I won't stick blend so long. I won't, I stick blend it uh, to like a thick trace before I stop. So I think next time I won't stick blend so long. However, uh, I think last time I did talk about needing longer spatulas, which spatulas, which I did not get. So you see how short this one is I got from um, Dollar Tree. I need to get some longer ones. I feel like this is going to volcano on me. Started out hot process and we're not having a volcano and then being sick. I wound up having a volcano because I wasn't paying attention too much. And now 
And then the second time I had the volcano is the last time I did the hot process. It was, um, I filled it up to the brim and I knew that was going volcano because I felt it. Yeah, I just felt it. And this is definitely, it feels like it. When you start to do soap a lot, hot process, cold process, you get a feel just like when you stick blending, you get a feel for what trace you at just by uh, feeling how the stick blender moves around in the, um, in the soap. And when you're doing hot process and you stir, you can feel either which stage you're at and sometimes you can feel when your soap is going to volcano. It feels like, um, let me see, I'm trying to, let me try to describe to you what a volcano feels like. Your soap usually gets, okay, applesauce stage, is it separates, it looks really um, gritty looking like applesauce, um, and so you got, when you stir it, it's really loose, because it's, it's all separate, and so you just stir it or whisk it or stick blend it or whatever to bring it back together, and as you stir it a little bit more past that stage, it starts to get a little thick. And to me, you know, the next stage would be mashed potato, but you know, some people, the stages are different for some people, but to me, the next stage is mashed potato. And I can feel the soap thickening up from the applesauce to the mashed potato, and I know that it won't be too long for my soap to get done. Now, when you, there's like a stage sometimes in between the applesauce and the uh, mashed potato, which could be the volcano stage. <laughs> and it feels airy. I don't know if you can see how this looks. Like it looks really um, goopy, uh, but kind of puffball looking. You can feel it. You, you're gli I glide, I'm gliding too much through it as I'm stirring it. It's not too thick, but not too thin like applesauce. But it feels light and fluffy. I guess like if you're baking or something like that, like if you're making like a meringue pie or something. It, it, yeah, it sort of feels fluffy like that when you're stirring it. And when you when it feels like that, sometimes you can get a volcano. That's, that's how you know when it's one coming along. I don't think I'm going to get one because I'm stirring it down. And when you think you're going to get a volcano, stir like your life depends on it. <laughs> because if you don't get a handle on that volcano before... It really, it'll get out of the control. And then next thing you'll know, it'll be like all over, all over the place and you'll have a really big mess. And of course, waste is soap and you don't want that. So, when I, feel, when I think I feel one coming on, I just stir. But, now that it, it don't feel like that anymore right now, it feels like I'm moving on to the mashed potato stage. So, I think I might be past the volcano which I thought might happen. <clears throat> now, if I'd have left it alone, it would have volcanoed. So when you think it might be one coming along, that's why maybe that's why I stir so much because I like to feel the different stages of my soap. So when you think you might feel one coming on, just stir. Yeah, just, just stir. And sometimes you won't even get one because you're stirring it down before it even starts. If you leave it alone, like you walk away, put the top on it, it's a good chance that, yeah, you're so blow volcano all over the place and could possibly make a mess. My stupid uh, spatula here is so short, sometimes my fingers get in the soap. I am so losing. I don't, the light is pretty much almost gone at this point. I feel like I'm soaping in the dark. <laughs> I like the soap by natural light because you can see the colors and everything a whole lot better. If I turn my kitchen light on, you'll see the shadows, the color won't look as as pink. Let me see, let me show you an example. Let me see, you guys can see how pink that is. Let's see if it changes. Huh, on the camera, it actually looks a lot pinker. <laughs> just having a time today maybe it's because the last time I, uh, I made high process by kitchen light I made the uh, dark viking soap and it was black and when I looked at the playback on the camera I couldn't see anything in the pot because it was so black however all that activated charcoal I had put in the soap it still came out dark red 
So, mm. all right, this looks pretty good. This pink is a nice color. I'm digging it from uh, Nurture Soap. specifically for soap and it's like a fold up card table like one of those you would get at Walmart that has those uh, four black matching chairs to go with it I've had it for so long and you know moved from an apartment to a house with my husband and I'm in this kitchen doesn't have any counter space so I'm like what the heck am I going to use and I was like hey that's right I have that card table that no one ever used except for rare occasions I tell you, it gets more used now than it ever did before. Being in a small apartment before, whenever we wanted to sit down and have like a romantic dinner or something, we would <laughs> fold up, the, uh, unfold the card table and pull out a table, a nice tablecloth, get some candles. But otherwise, the apartment was so small, it there was no dining area. You had kitchen, a half kitchen, and a living room. A half living room, I guess if you want to call it. Definitely getting some use out of it now. This kitchen is pretty small as well because uh, there's no, you can't fit a dining table or anything in here. Maybe if I didn't have a pantry or pantry, you got the <laughs> microwave stand and then another pantry, pantry, another cabinet for pots and pans because there's really no cabinet space. So, yeah, this is the only space I have for soaping is this table. strangest soup. I think I'm at the mashed potato stage now. Yeah. That, uh, stick blender definitely threw me through a loop today. Not sh certain of anything. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it again, but it won't stick blend as long. It was my first time doing it in a hot process, so it wasn't terrible. I am going to check this to see if it's done, and when I check to see if it's done, I just do a zap test. Zap test, yeah, I don't know if you have watched any of my previous videos, but in case you didn't, you take a little bit of soap, this is going to be hot, you take a little bit of soap, and you wait for it to cool. Once you wait for it to cool, you touch your tongue to it. If it zaps you, it's not done. That means it's still active lye in it, and you want to keep cooking. But I've been making soap for quite a while now, and to me, this looks done. I'm so used to my batch already being, like, white. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, like, all pink, and it's so pretty. Um, but, yeah, it looks like it's done. But just to be sure, I always like the zap test. Uh, and I dropped my piece. And of course, after you touch it to your tongue to zap test it, you don't put it back in the pan. I know I don't. Okay. So we're going to zap test it. And it tastes like soap, which means it's done. Ugh. So gross. <laughs> So, it definitely tastes like soap. Ugh. 
won't kill you. I just like the zap test to be sure. So, and let me show you what everything is going to be. So, my after liquid is coconut oil, coconut milk, not oil, <laughs> coconut milk. I think I've said that a couple times in the past video, and I run it back like, oh, I was meant to say coconut milk. And I have my super fat, which is shea butter, of course. I'll probably melt this in a microwave a little bit. I mean, sometimes I dump it in there, sometimes I don't. And I have, don't want to spill it. Um, my, let me turn this off. This is my fragrance, which is, what is it called again? <laughs> Bedtime Bath Lavender Chamomile Type. Johnson & Johnson Type, right. And my fragrance I get is from my, is, in, is from the fragrance oil group I'm in. And I've said that on past videos as well, which is called Savvy Intelligence Fragrances on Facebook. So what I'm going to do right now is, okay, first I'm going to pop this in the microwave, my shea butter, and then I'm going to mix up my color, purple over there. I, sh I wonder if I should just leave it, I don't know, I'm going to try it, I'm going to try the purple and see what happens. So let me get the purple. Uh, did I even say what purple I was using? No. So I'm using Nurture Soap. Again, Nurture Soap uh, Royal Purple Mica Powder. And I mixed a little bit of in um, some sweet almond oil that I took out the batch. It's not extra. And I'm going to use my little handy mixer here. I got this little mixer from Amazon. I think it was called like a frother or something, mini frother. I had the one from Brambleberry, but it just stopped working on me one day and I had had it for about hmm, five or six months. And it just, even with fresh batteries, it just stopped working. So, and that one was like $5 and something off of any site. This one was like $2 and some change off of Amazon. So, I said, shoot, if the thing is going to die on me, it better be extra cheap. Okay. Now, before I add this in, of course, I want to um, put in my super fat and everything first. Super fat first, and... I'm going to add my coconut milk in as well. Let's see. Ah, super fat is taking a little bit to melt. Hold on. Okay. Super fat melted. Woo! Get it in there. This little glass bowl was hot when I took it out the microwave. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to get this joint in there before I wind up dropping it because it was too hot. Okay. Always keep my handy soap sponge. Every time I make soap with a sink full of, I got a dish pan in the sink, a dish pan full of soapy bleach water. A little bleach just to you know get all get the oily residue off of everything and anything of course that I use for soap is only for soap So I definitely gonna have to get some longer spatulas because this little thing is definitely hurting my hand. I'm trying not to 
when I stir, I'm trying not to get half of my my fingers into the pot because <laughs> it's so small. I thought this uh, little small spatula was a good idea when you make small batches. When you start making big batches, eh, it's not big enough. Okay, that super fat looks like it's all mixed in. Now let's get my coconut milk in there. I saved, this is approximately 5.80 ounces. I, what did I do? I started off with the aloe vera juice and that was at 30% instead of 38. And then I saved and so I put in soap calc 39.06 so I can even out the water content. Uh, Cause you know, as you start getting to the point such and such, the uh, percentages of the water and the lye and everything start to be weird numbers. So in order to even it out, I did 39.06, which I never did that before, but I did want to even it out to like 25 ounces. So I did 30% right off the bat and I saved nine, the rest of the 9.06% for later to keep it nice and fluid. And yeah, that's what I did. I was debating on whether I should use coconut milk, goat's milk, aloe vera juice. That took me a little bit when I was doing soap calc. I'm like, oh, what do I want to do? Do I want to do vegan or what? Because I love, you know, I love goat's milk. I really do. So, I didn't know. So I chose coconut milk in the end. And I need to, first of all, I need to look and see. I got this coconut milk from... Walmart and when you go to down the aisle and you look to see which one you want there was two different cans and I was like well what's the difference of two different brands and I looked at the back one brand had like a bunch of additives and stuff in it and the other one didn't so I was like oh well shoot I'm gonna get this one the one of course that looked more natural and didn't have all the other stuff in it and when you open a can usually with coconut milk sometimes it'll be like curdled around the top and everything and this was the first time that I actually bought coconut milk where it hasn't been curdled or anything at the top and you didn't really have to stir it. So, whatever brand it is, I need to save the can so I can go back to Walmart and get a bunch of those. some dried pieces in there from the spatula. No, no, no. Mama don't want any dried pieces in her batch. Not if I can help it. Yeah, I definitely need to go back and get some more of that coconut milk. I didn't expect that when I opened the can. I had a spoon ready to stir it and everything. And it was perfect. So what are we doing now? Am I going to do, yeah, might as well do the color first before I try and do the purple. I mean, I might as well do the fragrance. I'm sorry. Eh. Doing the fragrance first, which is bedtime bath lavender chamomile. slowly. We don't want to splash back or anything. It smells really good. Making sure it's off. And if you usually don't stir a lot, this is where you really want to stir. 
a lot because you don't want unmixed fragrance oil in your soap. When you cut it, it might be, you know, leaking out and everything. You want to make sure your fragrance is all mixed in really, really well. Really, really well. I'm trying to alternate, um, stir it with my left and my right. I'm predominantly right-handed, but I still try and give my left hand a workout, especially when my right is tired. So, I always stir weird with the left, but I make sure I give them a workout as well. Make sure you scrape the bottom as well. Scrape the bottom. like it's all mixed in. Let me um, scrape some of this dry soap over here. Scrape some of the dry soap off of the spatula so I can um, scrape whatever down I can so the ones on the outside don't dry up too much. You don't want to get too many dry bits and so try to minimize that as possible. Like just sitting on the side, I'm going to just take that and put it to the side because I don't want that in my soap. You want it to look nice and smooth. All right. I wish you guys I wish you guys could see this because this purple has a nice shimmer to it. And of course, you probably cannot see it that well, but it's a really pretty shimmer to it. So, let's see. Hmm. Let's put it over here. See how this works out. See if I can see the purple over in this section here. <laughs> and it looks like the pink is just eating it up. <laughs> it really does. I don't see... like well I don't know I can see I can sort of see a difference yeah I can see a difference hope you guys can see it there's not a lot a difference but I do want to at least be able to see a contrast sort of in the soap as it um when I cut it I hope I hope so I don't know if I should risk if if I add the last the first time I tried to do powder uh, as far as powder color add it straight to the batch it didn't work out it didn't dissolve like it should like if it was cold process so I just add oil now but <sighs> I'm afraid of adding some more uh, you could almost <laughs> see the color change on the camera well, further ado, what we're going to do is just go ahead and put it in there and see how that works out. I hope you guys can see. Let me see. Am I taking too much of the camera or can you see that? All right. I'm going to have to change the am uh, camera angle again. <laughs> First of all, let me get all of this off of here. I just flung soap everywhere, which is what I usually do. All right. All right, so get this out the way. I'll take these off. One of the good benefits of hot process is the cleanup. You put everything in this bowl, all the spatulas and everything, put dump them all in there when the soap is all gone, and run some water in it, leave it in there maybe for a day or not, it don't have to be a day, maybe a few hours, and everything is dissolved. All right, so here we go. Let's do this. 
Oh, wow, look at that pour. I know that I'm probably in you guys' way. And this is pretty color. Pretty, pretty, pretty color. Okay, here's a big purple glove. I'm gonna try to spread it around evenly if I can. Hopefully you'll see when I cut it, I hope, but we will find out. I'm not going to mix it all up too much because I do hope to see the difference in contrast. That's why I didn't want to like do a, um, a hanger swirl or anything through it. Next time, I'll make a note to maybe add a little bit more purple. Because I think I just used one teaspoon. Yeah, I just used one teaspoon of purple. I think next time, I'll probably use like two. And see how that works out. much as I can before it gets hard. left around the top I'm gonna leave since that hasn't been warm in a minute so it hasn't been warm that long and which means it'll probably be hard process is nothing sometimes you know can't really do too much to the top because the since it's exposed to the air um, is and not heat it's the first thing that uh, gets hard so if you try and do something to it you better be pretty quick because as it's cooling down you won't really be able to do anything to it so it's just going to be rustic looking, of course, because it's not all smooth and, and nice looking like cold process. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not at all. I like my hot process. I like the way it looks. You know, the rustic look. Otherwise, I would just be doing cold process. You know? Okay. That looks good. It looks good. That looks good. So... Now, what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to, um, hmm, I'm gonna, let me see one of these spoons so I can scrape the soap off the edges. Oop, I went down in there. Try to put that back in there. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get the soap off the edges, and I keep going... Just 
just trying to clean it up and get the soap off the edges, that's all. As much as you can. Or you can just be messy. Whatever. I try and be a little bit neat. <laughs> as much as I can. I try to be neat. Okay. Now, what else I want to do? I was thinking of adding a little glitter to the top. I was going to add some pink glitter, but I'm like, eh, I used that last time. So, this one I have is, I don't know if you can see, let me walk around the table so you guys can see it. I got it from Nurture Soap, of course, and it's Silver Bio Glitter. I, I bought this spray bottle from them as well, so you just, and I just put the glitter in here. And then you just spray it like this. And then when you're done, you just click it back this way. So. Spray a little glitter. And uh, hope I don't get it everywhere. Hmm. Not that much is coming out, that's for sure. Course it probably sticks better to cold process. <laughs> uh, usually when I put on the glitter or mica lines, instead uh, this is the first time me using this, I usually get a little, I have a little sifter I got from Rainberry that I use. But I was like, well, I see people on the YouTube videos using this thing, so I'll try it. I'm not sure I like it. It just doesn't... Well, hmm. If you only like a tiny bit of glitter to come out or, you know, whatever to come out, then I guess it's fine. I did expect a little bit more to come out. Not so little. But I guess it's alright. I don't want to overload everybody with glitter. So... Now, let me show you the baby. Yep. <laughs> so, thank you guys for staying with me through this journey. And don't forget to thumbs up me, like, subscribe, and keep watching. And if you have any feedback or anything at all, good, bad, I guess it doesn't matter, anything, just uh, put a comment down there and I'll, I always reply to my comments. So, thank you for watching. This is Fia from Fia's Handmade Soaps. Follow me on Facebook. And I'll see you next time.